Beautiful, so welcome to our event, everybody. My name is Alyssa. I'm the campus manager here at 4Geeks Academy. I do see many faces here of 4Geeks student and alumni. So if you are here from 4Geeks, of course, welcome. Um, and if you're not here from 4Geeks, uh, we are a coding boot camp. We're based here in Miami, but our classes are online. So you can take our classes from anywhere nationwide. We teach full stack software development, which is basically how to build apps and websites, how to learn how to code. We teach data science and machine learning, cybersecurity, and applied AI, which applied AI is how to use AI in your current job to make you better at your job and more productive. Um, we're welcoming Bridget here today, who has a very impressive bio that I'm going to read right now. Bridget is a top mindset coach. She launched into entrepreneurship during a time when people were pursuing reinvention and per personal and professional wide in the Find Your Freedom program and stuck on ready programs. She found the law of innovative business business growth strategies to equip, equip them to access their limitless potential. Her book, Stuck on Ready, is a hit bestseller on Amazon in the first six weeks and has been referred to as a business Bible. She resides in Palm Beach, Florida with her husband, three boys, and two dogs. We love a dog owner. Um, <laughs> that's very impressive, but I'm sure you are also going to do uh, a great job introducing yourself too. Um, and she is going to take up the next hour of your time with her advice on job search strategies and how to be the top 1% and get hired. So Bridget, I will let you take it away. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, so my name is Bridget Hom. Uh, obviously, before I ventured into entrepreneurship, I held many jobs and I'm going to actually step you through the process because um, about getting the jobs that I wanted was a little unconventional. Um, it wasn't with a resume per se um, right away. It wasn't with, um, you know, a quick indeed like, hey, here they it wasn't with a cover letter and an email. Um, the jobs that I landed actually came from who do you know? Um, and then going on the job hunt to meet with the who. It wasn't always the how. As I was sharing with someone earlier, I love the book, Who Not How by Dan Sullivan. Because who's gonna lead you to that next opportunity uh, is actually going to help you to land the job that you want. So you should really be looking at faces versus sometimes just job descriptions. Look at the people who would be hiring, find the decision makers, and make your own introduction. Remember, the, the number one thing that stands between us and a job opportunity, or any opportunity for that matter, is typically our limiting beliefs. The limiting beliefs that we sell ourselves. Because we're all in sales. You know, you sold yourself on showing up here today because you wanted to learn some new strategies on how to level up in the job search industry, right? So you sell yourself on what you're going to do next in your life, your relationships, and your business. You're your number one clients. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat because I will be answering them. So if you have any questions during our time together, put them there and I will be sure to answer them. So the first thing I want you to do during our experience together is start to identify those limiting beliefs that you've been selling yourself. What are they? I'm never going to get a job until I have this. I'm not, I haven't gotten a job because of this. Like, what is it that you've been selling yourself? And the truth is, you're right. Whatever you sell yourself, that sales pitch is going to dictate how you show up and how you actually take imperfect action to get to that next job opportunity. Any thoughts so far? Did I tell you this was gonna be interactive? <laughs> so you always wanna be seeing and asking yourself, okay, what have I sold myself? Um, have I sold myself the limiting belief, the lie that there's no jobs out there? Have I sold myself that I'm underqualified? Have I sold myself that, uh, you know, there's so many other applicants to this job that I want, I'm not gonna get it. 
So write down those things that you've sold yourself about how you're acting in the job industry. Cross them out as a lie or a truth. That's the first step. So embrace the now and stop operating in those limiting beliefs because honestly, they're expensive. When you buy your own limiting beliefs, they're expensive because it costs you, well, out of your serenity account, your sanity account, and your real bank account because you no longer are focused on the opportunities that are in front of you. You're only focused on what you've been believing about the job industry that you're in or want to be in. All right, so <laughs> you might disagree with me, but I'd love to hear it. Do you know that you are in sales? Do you know that? Yes, fantastic, amazing. You've sold yourself on being <laughs> underqualified. Yeah, that's true, a lot of us do that. So why are you in sales? Let me explain. The number one thing you sell yourself or sell other people on is actually not your skill set. It's actually not all the things that you've written on your resume. The number one thing you sell yourself or sell an impossible employer on is your credibility, confidence, right? I always say you're selling people your authority, your credibility, and your relatability. And yeah, if you sold yourself on your underqualified, you're absolutely right. But I've seen so many people, I think it, there was a statistic about job seekers and it was actually it was about men and women and it said that men will pursue jobs that they're underqualified for and get them where women will will pursue jobs that they have nine out of ten skills for and they won't pursue it because they don't have 10 out of 10. so what does that say what it really says is that if you believe you're underqualified then you're probably right and you won't take action but what if you just believed that you were capable what if you believed that you were likable and teachable and you wanted success? What if that was what you led with versus saying, uh, yeah, I don't have the exact skill set that's required? I'll tell you a quick story. My first job that I got, it was actually with a very intimidating Italian business owner. Uh, I don't know if anyone has mafia family. Um, I do now that's out there. Uh, but very uh, intimidating. And he'd asked me uh, at the time I was Miss Becker, Miss Becker, what can you do for me here at my, at my establishment? What can you do? And I said, I can do anything you need me to do at your company. Now, was that true at the time? No, it wasn't. But what he bought was my belief. What he bought was my confidence. And when you lead with that, that is the first thing an employer is going to buy from you. But here's the thing. You must believe that you're capable, that you're likable, and that you want success. And you want to be able to communicate that you want success for your possible employer as well. Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. So that's what you're selling people. You're selling your potential employer that you're likable, you're teachable, that you want success for you and for them. If you walk into any job or if you put on a cover letter, listen, I am, I'm likable and I'm teachable. I want success for you and for me. And I could do what you need me to do in this company. I just want to work for this company. Uh, you're probably going to get an interview. How many people get to the interview and they freeze up? I'm just curious. I want to speak into that as well. So it, the moral of that is if you have even a 50% skill set, know that you're really selling people that you're capable. Okay, think about the jobs that you apply for. Are you capable? Right? Now you just have to sell people on, yes, I could absolutely help you with this. And you have to sell people on, I'm a hard worker right? I'm a hard worker and I want, I want to do this. I want to do better and be better, right? I always say personal development is the foundation for professional success. Personal development is the foundation for professional success. So if you're in that place where you're looking for a job 
how you stay in the right mindset is that you're focused on more and better every day. Maybe you apply for a few jobs, but then go out and network. There's so many virtual networking platforms today. Go on Alignable. Go look up Zoom business networking groups on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Eventbrite. Network and say what you're looking for. And then master this question. John Maxwell, who do you know that I should know? Who do you know that I should know? You see, it's not looking for a job is not just sitting behind a screen and then like hoping and praying that, you know, someone will look at what you wrote and be in awe of it or see that you've matched the skill set 100 percent. It's actually about recognizing the value that you bring to the table and then going out and meeting the who. Ah, I see. This brings me to my next point based on what's in the chat. Master the latest trends and technologies in your field. Your experience is valuable. And it's important to show that you can adapt and stay current with industry developments. Show that you're tech savvy and experienced expert in your field. Also, knowing your organic, doing organic research on the people that you're going to be meeting with. Do you ever do that? I'm going to share you a quick story. There was a realtor who wanted to close um, a, a listing, a top, you know, multi-million dollar listing. And so what he did was he studied his target market. Now, these are some business words, right? He studied his target market. Your target market is your employer, the employer you want to work for. Followed them on LinkedIn, Facebook. And so he found out that this, this person he was trying to close to sell their house he found out they were an author and got their book and then went to their house and, and to have a conversation and then left, almost left the conversation. And he said, listen, I'd love to list your house, but, and I never leave an appointment without a signature, right? Without a signature, meaning uh, we're going to partner together. But then he pulled out the guy's book and he wanted an autograph. How creative was that? Do you know your potential employers? Do you know what they love to do so that you're able to even have a conversation with them? In the world of social media, we could pretty much find out anything about everyone. If you know your potential employer has a family, you could say, hey, you know, do you have a, how's your family? Or do you have any tips that you could share? If they like to go boating, you know, share something that you learned about boating. Just Find some relatability. <laughs> it almost sounds like stalking. However, in the business world, it's called relatability. You see, if you step into a conversation, I love that you said that, Louise. Um, if you step into a conversation and you know nothing about that person, and then you're going to be like, hi, let's just talk about my skill set. And uh, if I can, if, if you would hire me or not. You're propositioning your potential employer as much as they are propositioning you. Because you're saying, okay, what is the vision? You're saying, here's the vision I have to work for you. Most people who are, are going to be on the job search market forever are never in a place where they're able to communicate a vision to a potential employer and say, this is what I see for your company. This is the more and better I see for your company. This is how I would like to be an integral part of that. Ownership ownership and expanding that vision. So yes, if you come to the table, like I had suggested this uh, marketing, um, this woman who is looking for a marketing job, I said, do a SWOT analysis on the person who's uh, on the company before you step into the interview. Now, you know, with ChatGPT, you could do a SWOT analysis within seconds. But then to go in and communicate that and say, here's what I see for your company. Can you do that based on your skill set? What if you stepped into an interview with that and you're already acting as if you're in the job? How much would that set you apart versus the person who walks into the interview waiting to be asked the next question? What questions are you going to bring to your interviews? The critically thinking individual who gets hired always has questions. So think ahead and ask 
your potential employer or the interviewer some questions about the company, about the culture. Ask about the company culture. Now that will set you apart entirely. If you say, what is the company culture like? What is it like to work here? What do you love about your company culture? See, in the uh, business world, we talk, that's called breaking free from uh, giving or receiving a sales pitch. Because now you've added, you've created a multifaceted conversation, not just an interviewer or an interviewee. Jumping back into the resume idea, definitely, if you can, have your picture on your resume. Have your picture and also include some charity work that you've done to show that you have multiple facets to who you are. Because people want to work with other creative people. Show them who you are. All right, so we've covered overcome your limiting beliefs. Don't, don't sell them to yourself and don't buy them. They're expensive. You are in sales. You're selling your confidence, your credibility, and your authority and relatability. <laughs> People buy confidence before they look at your skill set. What employers want most is that you're likable, you're teachable, and that you want success. Most employers never communicate that effectively. When I coach them, they do. But most of them are looking for that in a skill set. But if you actually bypass that and say, listen, this is who I am, likable, I'm teachable, I want success for you and for me, that's, that interview is going to go exceptionally well. Master the latest trends and technologies, especially pertaining to the job that you are applying for. Network like a pro. It's the who, not how mindset. This is how relationships lead to revenue. Who are the existing connections you have that you want to call them and say, hey, love to have a conversation. Who do you know that I should know? You never know who might have an opportunity or a referral for you. So get on Alignable, get on some Zoom business networking, do some virtual networking. You can find them on Facebook, on Eventbrite, and become the expert in the interview before you even step into the interview. Get to know who you're going to talk to. Because the more research you, you show that you've done, in a sense, not in a creepy way, but just so you can hold a conversation, the, the more you're gonna bridge the gap between being that strange stranger who just applied with an application to that person who's showing that I will be invaluable if you hire me. So with that being said, do you have any thoughts, aha moments, questions, or anything you'd like me to go over? Hey, um, my name is Samuel. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, yes. So my entire career, I've been trained to make a resume fit on one page. But um, what you just mentioned about adding some you know, charity works and adding to everything we already have on the resume, that's gonna be, that's gonna make it harder um, to fit on one page. So what, what are your, your thoughts about it? Is a one page resume still, you know, the way to go or what, what do you think? I think have all the most important features on your first page absolutely have a second page and you can add those things in. Also, what I've been saying is that all the jobs that I've ever gotten hired for, um, it was through a conversation and it was who I knew and who could recommend me to somebody else. So having a resume is, is like having a picture of you, right? So you, the picture is great, but people want to see the real thing. So what I'm saying is don't get too overwhelmed or excited or put so much energy invested into your resume because ultimately you should be trying to secure a conversation more than anything. 
So even if you were to bypass and say, like, for example, if I wanted to work at Hallmark, just an example, if I wanted to work at Hallmark, I would go and friend every single person in the Hallmark company on LinkedIn. And then I would kindly message, hey, I would love to connect with you. Um, I've been exploring the Hallmark culture and seeing if it would be a good fit. What do you have right now that's not listed as a potential job? I would love to have a conversation. So I'd send a Calendly link. I'd send a calendar link to get to know the organization. Now that's called the power of actually understanding the who, not how method. I recommend that book if I, I could put it in the chat, who, not how by Dan Sullivan. Check that out on Amazon because it will help you get into the mentality of, of actually seeing the job search industry, not through just, um, binoculars, but through like, it's a kaleidoscope. There's so many facets to doing job search effectively. I've just made phone calls over sending a resume or send a resume and then make a phone call and say, I would love to have a conversation. Have you done that? Have you actually hunted for a job in a way that was action oriented to get to who is the decision maker? And are you ready to say, I'm likable, I'm teachable, and I want success for you and me? Now that you think about it, yeah, I think, uh, Logan, all of my jobs in life have been through strong referrals or being connected that helped me set apart from the competition. Yes, that's the power of who. For example, when I, I became a legal news reporter from a ministry job. All right, so let's, let's I don't know if anyone's in college here, but I'll share with you uh, a story of when I was looking for a job in college. Two years before I graduated, I had a few things on my resume, Starbucks, macaroni girl, a uh, couple of restaurants. And I decided I want a full ride to Notre Dame for my master's in Catholic theology. I found out the diocese of Fort Wayne would pay for that and give me a job. Now, so I sent out my resume to them and gave them a phone call and say, I'd like to, I said, I'd like to work for you. They called me in and interviewed me realized I was only a sophomore in college. And they're like, we don't have a job for you. You're only a sophomore. And I said, I know, but I want to get this process started sooner. And I could do anything you need me to do here. So what happened six months before I graduated, I didn't have a trade job. I didn't have any specific kind of degree, but based on my degree and just on my assertiveness, they said, we don't even have a job for you and you're hired. And this was six months before I graduated college and I had a full ride to Notre Dame waiting for me. So what does that say? What does that story say about when you uh, take that assertive next move to go after what you believe you deserve and what you want and what you know you're capable to do, do it. You have nothing to lose, but your limiting beliefs. Next job was a legal news reporter job. By the way, um, they said, uh, Bridget, what do you know about law? I said, I know absolutely nothing, but I'm a fast learner and I do have a journalism background. So they said, all right, great. Well, I could teach you anything you need to know about law, but you have a journalism background. So if I looked at that out on a resume, if they looked at my resume, they would not have hired me, right? If they just had just looked at my resume, no law experience at all, had a journalism ministry background, because of a conversation and because of the confidence that I sold them and the willingness and the assertiveness, that's why they hired me. I just want to encourage you, if you feel underqualified, it's probably you're selling yourself a limiting belief and you're not selling yourself that you are extremely capable. Are you willing to learn? Do you want success? And do you want success that you want to work with? Any other thoughts, questions? Samuel, did that answer your question? Uh, yes, yes, you did. Oh, good. Hi, Bridget. A uh, very good conversation. Um, and your advice is absolutely great. I'm a 
recent graduate of uh, Four Geeks Academy myself. Um, and I was fortunate enough to come across a program uh, while um, moving to Maryland for a year called Maryland Service Corps. Um, it's basically something the governor gave out for people who wanted to get a career in tech and what have you. Um, and um, I got involved with a company called Bitech Solutions. Um, I wasn't a very good coder, <laughs> so I was a little apprehensive about applying for the job, but I did. Um, and then I found another role, which I was fortunate just because of applying myself, like you're saying, um, to become a project manager. So I was hired as a project manager apprentice, and I absolutely love the role, but it's because of me, um, I guess, going out of my comfort zone of trying to just code, 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 and I'm a coder, I'm a coder, I'm a coder, and I'm a full stack developer, and I've got this. And now um, I'm working for the company and they've renewed my contract again. Um, so I'm pretty happy working for them. I work remotely. And it's because of just stepping out of the comfort zone and not focusing on just what I'm doing, what I'm doing, what I'm doing, and trying something different. So great advice. I just wanted to put that out there for any of my fellow 4 Geek Academy. Um, you know, step out of your comfort zone. Uh, give it a try in something else. You don't necessarily need the code. And fortunately, the people who came to our graduation, uh, I don't remember their names exactly. I think it's called Byte or something. They were able to uh, talk about that, that, hey, listen, you don't necessarily have to do coding in this tech world. You can do something else. So I'm fortunate enough to have that. And I'm just very happy for 4 Geeks opportunity. And thank you for your advice. Awesome. That was a powerful testimonial story of taking imperfect action and being ready before he felt ready to make a move. Beautiful. Tina, yes, you got a question? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, I had a question about um, if how do you make yourself marketable to a company that's asking for more experience than you have? Great question. First of all, you always look the part. If you have a LinkedIn profile, which I highly recommend all of you have, you should be wearing a blazer. You should look professional and polished. Why? Because no matter what, dressing professional and polished automatically communicates some level of experience. So if you don't have a blazer on in your current profile picture and a smile and a professional background, change that right now. Secondly, sell them on, I am likable, I am teachable, and I want success for you and for me. So what you don't make up for an experience, you sell them on your ambition, your confidence, and you're willing to work hard. Does that make sense? Button down and a sweater vest? Yes. Okay, perfect. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, button down and sweater vest, that's absolutely fine. You, you want to look as polished and professional as possible. And honestly, <laughs> ask people like, what does my picture say to you about me? Ask people in here, right? What do you think, what do you think I do based on my picture? Because a picture says a thousand words and an image consultant that I, um, I spoke with said that people draw, I think it's 11 impressions of you in the first seven seconds of meeting you. You guys made impressions, you thought of impressions based on what you saw about me, from my background, from the way I'm dressed, from how I speak, from the intro. So everyone's constantly making assessments. Always give them the best possible assessment of you. If you're going to an interview, I want you to dress above, above your audience or your interviewer, so to speak. Dress the part, be professional. I mean, I'm in a blazer right now. I'm in a blazer on all my calls, no matter what. No matter if I'm working at my home office, it does not matter because this communicates polished and professional and successful. It's just how our mind receives it. Any other questions or comments? Thanks for that, Logan. I've been seeing all your little comments here and there. You guys are awesome. I mean, for example, um, hi, Rigid Mariano here. And nice. thanks for all of this information. Uh, 
one question that is coming to my mind is just, for example, like how do you overcome like a rocky pass? Like if you had, I had a, I had a really good job, but then I, I don't know, I didn't end up that job in good terms. Uh, one of the fears that I have when I'm applying to jobs is that, oh, they are going to call them. And even though I was a good employee and everything, and I am very capable and, and everything, I'm like, oh, this is just going to come bite my, <laughs> my everything else, right? So what do you suggest in terms of that? Well, is the same person that you ended on with bad terms still at that job, your old employer? Yeah, I mean, like they, uh, they were like the owners, so yeah, they are still there. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'm not applying to them. Like, no, I'm, I know you're applying to somebody else. Yeah. Um, honestly, put your best foot forward in this new job. Um, that's that's the best. Don't worry about what if you're really concerned. Um, I wouldn't address it until after you've already applied to this new job, and they already get an impression of you. Now, if they say, we'd like to contact your previous employer, then I would do a little bit of behind the scenes work. And um, I would personally reach out. And probably if you if you left on bad terms and it, it was partially your fault, then then make a quick amends, um, I think, or, you know, and say, you know, I'm sorry, this didn't work out. Typically in job situations, there's no such thing as acceptance or rejection. There's only alignment. And so in communicating that and maybe clearing that side of the street for yourself after the, you've already made a good impressions with this job and if they're going to reach out, then maybe say something. Or, you know, if you feel like being candid with your new potential employer, they already like you, you've communicated, you're likable, you're trainable and you want success for both of you, then maybe explain that there was a, a, a little situation and here's why. Um, if that If there is that potential rapport that you've started to build already, um, if, if there's a fear involved, you always want to address the fear as, is this realistic or not? Like if it was just a simple, sometimes business decisions burn certain individuals, right? And sometimes it wasn't personal. Sometimes it was just business. So it's really good for you to discern that for yourself as well. Is that helpful? Yeah, it is. Thank you. Um, I have I have another question. I'm sorry. Um, it's still about the res still about the resume. Uh huh. So yeah, let let's say you worked and then uh, lost your job. You spent like two years without any job. Uh -huh. How do you overcome the gap on on your resume? Um, are you not working at all? At all, I'm not working at all. All right. Well, um. First of all, I want to I want to challenge something for you for a moment. Um, have a job, no matter what. Um, don't put open to work on your LinkedIn profile, please. And here's why: if you're looking at someone's open to work, it communicates that you're out of a job and you're desperate, and you'll probably do anything, right? So don't put that on there. You want to look like you're doing something. You don't want someone to think you're unemployed. So start a side hustle, okay? Start doing something with your time. Start, start working some sort of job or angle or something. But it has to look like you're busy because truthfully, people don't want to hire unemployed people, right? Let's just be real about this. People want to hire people who are making moves, who are taking action who are, are literally always looking for the next thing to do. So if you're worried about your, um, your two year gap, I want you to look at that two years and see what you've been doing. If you've been doing charity work, if you've been doing something that you can put on a resume, you definitely don't want a gap. I want you to get creative. Get creative and definitely find a job. Volunteering at a church, do something. And definitely don't put open to work. But maybe put that you're based on your area of expertise. Look if you could do a few side hustles. If you're in the digital marketing world, have a job on Fiverr. 
look on Fiverr and then just start doing some jobs, pick up some jobs here and there. There is always an opportunity to have a side hustle, to do something. You definitely don't want a gap on your resume and it's actually unnecessary. If I had to get a job anywhere, I would have one. I will never, ever, ever go. Even if I had to work at Publix or McDonald's, it does not matter. A job is a job and work is work. And so I just want to encourage you in that because you definitely look at the last two years. I know we're just having this conversation now. So don't hire judgment on your mental team about whatever is going on for you. But I want to encourage you, look at what you can write on your resume for the past two years. Where can you, where have you been of service? Does that, is that helpful, Samuel? I know you maybe. Yes, it is. Okay. I know you may have felt like you were probably just really gunning for this specific kinds of jobs and I get it. And all of a sudden two years has passed, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I understand. So right now from this point on, I want you to look up side hustles that you could do on, on Fiverr, um, on anywhere, anywhere. If you could be an apprentice for something, find just something and then look at what you can write for the past two years. Okay. Because you haven't been doing anything. You haven't been doing nothing. Um, I would have said nothing. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I think I, I went a little bit hard on myself. Not nothing. I got a few gigs for six months, four months, every now and then, but nothing in what I really wanted to. So, ah, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Well, then make sure on your LinkedIn profile, because honestly, everyone's searching for our credibility on social media. That's just how it is these days. Make sure it shows what you've been doing. Make sure you have a title, something underneath um, for your LinkedIn profile. Look super polished and professional. Do not put open to work. People don't like to hire people who aren't working. They just don't. It just goes against our natural human psychology. But you can still be applying for jobs. Any thoughts? Uh, I have a question on that to add. Yes, please, Tina. Um, so on LinkedIn, I don't have the the logo on the um, open to work on your my profile picture, but there's a section um, on LinkedIn when you like make edits where you could put on your profile um, that will only show to recruiters, like open to like what your like what types of jobs you're you'll be willing to work for. Is that okay, or should I remove that? No, absolutely. If it's only for recruiters, a one hundred and ten percent. That would be brilliant. Okay, it would be a brilliant move. Great right. question too. You have someone named Beethoven. That's awesome. Any other questions, guys? I don't want to keep you longer than um, than you have to. If you've gotten something from this call, please put it in the chat. And if you have any other questions, let's, uh, yes. Um, so kind of going back to like limiting beliefs, right? I know you said, you know, write them down or know what your limiting beliefs are, know what is true and false. Now, if they are true, do we kind of just work on making that not true? Or like, what are your suggestions? You know, it's absolutely fascinating because if you write down what you believe is a limiting belief, you'll be able to identify if it's true or false. Mm -hmm. And if it is true, then yes, you have to, you definitely address it. And usually you address things within action. Okay. If you need to break free from something that's bogging you down, but it is true about you, then you take imperfect action. If it's like, oh, I am unqualified for this job. Your question is, what do I have to do to be qualified? And what do I have to learn? So then you step into learning it to break free from that imposter syndrome. Yeah. Appreciate that, thank you. Absolutely. All right, any other questions? This has been excellent. Great refresher, motivated towards utilizing our strengths and boosting our confidence. Excellent. Thanks for that feedback, Logan. You guys are all awesome. I love your comments in the chat.
Anyone else? I had a quick question that I asked earlier in the chat. It's maybe you didn't see it, but when you were talking about using your picture on a resume, I used to have my picture and I wanted to do like an A-B test where I didn't use my picture to see how they would compare. And I've actually been getting better results without it, but I'm not opposed to putting it back on. Um, but I'm also wondering about, because when I did the AB test this time, I added like some personal details. Like I said, I have two dogs. I have a one-year-old I like to do. Do you recommend that? Or is that sometimes I feel like if I say I have children, people might be like, oh, well, maybe she's busy with her children and she won't be a great worker. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give him all those details, but if you've done charity work that would show you're altruistic, that's different. So if you've come, if you've been a part of service organizations, you would, you could lead with that. Um, I wouldn't lead with those details until, um, yeah, I wouldn't lead with those details at first. But I mean, that's it's not the very end, but do you recommend it's just better not to have it on? I, I do. I would recommend okay. not to have it on because if you saw me as a single mom with three boys, when I launched a business, oh, you probably wouldn't want to hire me because you'd instantly be selling yourself limiting beliefs before you looked at who I was and my best skill set for you. So yeah, I would leave that off. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and honestly, like I said, it's who, not how send in a resume and then friend everyone on LinkedIn in that company. Make sure you have posts that are encouraging, empowering, inspiring, and educational. Make sure you show that you still have your thumb on the pulse of the industry. Cause that's going to sell them about you. They're going to check LinkedIn when they see your resume come in. Where's the first place they're going to go to look more about you. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah, probably not Facebook, but also getting some virtual networking. Do you know what Alignable is? Alignable is a virtual networking platform. That's a very, it's focused on local and it's a great place to network. And they have these things called smart connects where you can meet with seven business owners one-on-one -on -one for seven minutes each in an hour. So you can probably find an opportunity to work for someone pretty rapidly in in uh, calls like that. So check out Alignable. I'll put it in the chat. Alignable.com. They also have Zoom business networking meetings on LinkedIn. You can look up Zoom business networking meetings on Eventbrite um, and really just say, who do you know that I should know? It's remarkable who you'll find who are like, oh yeah, I'll I'll hire you or I'll junior apprentice you, or even it'd be a virtual thing. You could find someone who's looking for someone to work with them for their company. Valentina, did you want to say something? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I know that you said that you don't recommend to have the open to work batch on LinkedIn for all members, but you do recommend it to have it only for recruiters, right? Correct. Okay, yeah, because I was seeing some, uh, people in the chat saying that they will <laughs> delete that. And I think it's also uh, something really good to have it uh, for recruiters because I've worked as a recruiter before and that's a filter that we use to see who is available and who's not. So I just wanted to clear that out so <laughs> they don't go directly to their profiles and just delete the batch. Agreed. Absolutely. No, you want to have that for recruiters, but you do not want everyone or potential employers to see that. Because no one, honestly, would you want to hire someone who's been unemployed? Yeah, but I think it's different, uh, sorry, to be uh, unemployed and to be open to work. You know what I mean? Uh, well, they kind of are synonymous. Because if you're saying open to work, then that means you don't have work. No, or you have one, but you're looking for a better opportunity, right? Like, I don't know, I'm just... Well, I know, but that, <laughs> that's that, why you have the, the, the batch just for recruiters to see it and not your employer, because you have already a job, but you want to like look for new opportunities, right? Yes, 100%. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, how many companies do you recommend someone should apply for at one time? Do you recommend a limit? No, absolutely not. And the goal is to secure an interview. And to probably like and comment on that company's stuff, to know their website, um, to to make a phone call, not wait for an interviewer to call you. You want to be assertive, especially in the job market. I actually had um, someone that I had worked with 
um, who walked into a company and because of her presence and her poise and her creativity and her leadership, they created a position for her. They said, we don't even have a position for you, but we like your ex your area of expertise. And they created an entirely new position for her. What does that say about when we're just sitting back and waiting for someone else to take the initiative to tell us that they want us to work for them? Just a couple of thoughts. Anyone else? Uh, if I could ask another question. Yeah. So I know um, the tech field is, you know, very um, competitive as, as a, a lot of other, um, you know, fields. Um, what do you recommend, like, especially if we're looking for a job in LinkedIn, you know, we can send hundreds of applications per day other than, um, I guess you've mentioned like um, connecting with people in that company already, uh, maybe like re reaching out to the person that posted, right? Or like, the hiring person is there any other things that you think that we could do to secure the interview in the first place absolutely um so you could you could easily message the people in the company or the person who's hiring or the hr person mm -hmm. and be like i'm looking for a great book recommendation what do you recommend okay because you're we get so focused on what we want to focus on that we forget they're real people people in business are synonymous so you could actually reach out and not ask them a question that you want to know the answer to like, Hey, when we, are you doing interviews, blah, blah, blah. But you could actually ask an entirely different question as just someone who's a part of your network. Okay. So I'm looking for a new book recommendation or what's, what's, um, what's a podcast that you like to listen to or like, Oh, I love that community service project you were a part of. I'm always looking for things like that. Okay. as well as tech things that I can do, right? Or share an article that you read that might they might be interested in based on their industry. You see how you break free, break them free from receiving a sales pitch about, hey, when are you hiring? Are you hiring right now? Mm -hmm. And see if you get a, any feedback. Okay. Yeah, just because um, I know like <clears throat> graduating a boot camp and applying, you know, our, our resumes, it's only going to look good to a certain point. Um, so, yeah, always looking for those extra little things that, you know, we can do to stand out for sure. Well, well, and how you stand out is you start to build a relationship because it also takes the fear out of it for you. <laughs> for sure. Gary, like be, be your, bring your human self to the picture. Be like, you know, you don't want to be like, hey, when are you hiring? Or I put my resume in. No one wants to hear that. You don't even like to say that. So find something that you can relate to. Look at their profile. It won't take you more than a couple of minutes. Okay. And and compliment them or say, I love that. And then guess what? That's a touch point. So they'll easily see that you uh you responded, you messaged them, and that's a positive touch point for you for them to look at your resume and recognize your name. But also be posting. Okay. On um on LinkedIn. Yes, on okay. Yeah, on LinkedIn for sure. Okay. Yep. Bring some passion for sure. All right. I'm gonna we're gonna close out in the next four minutes. Does anyone have any other questions? Or did anyone have something that they, they're gonna walk away with and use moving forward? Please put it in the chat so other people can see your golden nugget that you're going to walk away with. Logan's got a good one. Bring some passion. Absolutely. Jasmine, thank you so much. It was informative. I love the job search approach. Yep. Posting more on LinkedIn and stalking your recruiters. Yeah. <laughs> Stalking. Awesome. Yeah. Reach out first. Don't wait for the call. Be assertive. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. I want you to all get hired. Sell likability and showing willfulness to work. Yes. Be confident. Be likable. Be teachable. Yes. Yes. And, and also remember, Joel, 
I want success for you and for me. No one's going to say that. I mean, honestly, say that in an interview, see how that goes. And then uh, message me on LinkedIn. It's going to be awesome. Be ready before you feel ready. If you guys want more strategies, I put a lot of strategies in my book. Um, you can get it for free plus shipping. It's it's uh, called Stuck on Ready. I'll just put it in the chat for you if you want to check it out. But I talk a lot about organic networking, et cetera, um, and how to fire sabotage and hire sanity, success, and serenity. And practice emotional intelligence and communication strategies. So stay centered and realize that the job search, it's no such thing as acceptance or rejection. In the world of job search, there's only alignment. So whenever you walk into an interview, just realize you're focused on, is this going to work for you and for me? It's not, am I going to work for you? It's, is this going to work for you and for me? Thank you, Bridget. Sorry, I'm gonna keep my camera off to close because I'm having some cut-ins and cut-outs like I, I was before, but I'm hoping I'm gonna be good to close out here. Um, Bridget, is there anything else you wanna share? Do you wanna drop your LinkedIn? Do you have, have anything else you wanna add before we close? Um, sure, Here, here's my calendar link. If you guys do need, have any other questions or if you need to chat for 30 minutes, we can do that. Um, and maybe there's someone that I know that you should know. So if you do need to chat, um, the, back, the book is available on Amazon as well. Yes. That's it. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. I'm, I'm so glad that this has been insightful. Have a wonderful evening, guys, and go make moves. Coming. This has been a really awesome event. I learned a lot. I'm sure that everybody who attended learned a lot. Um, so I'll just close out quickly. We do post this on LinkedIn, or excuse me, on YouTube in case you want to watch it again. Um, and yeah, that's that's really it. Stay tuned um, for our other events. Thank you, Bridget, very much for coming. Internet trouble here, so um we'll, we'll just close out then but thank you very absolutely i'm glad i could be here to inspire y'all contact with bridget if you need anything else bye guys go make moves thank you bye bye guys